Hours Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan, the news read by Muhammad Zubair Khan. First, the headlines. Prime Minister during his visit to District Shangla tomorrow will announce a historic development package for the area. Interior Minister says the government has decided to launch crackdown against elements maligning people through immoral videos. Federal Minister for Poverty Alleviation and Social Security says all efforts are being made to expand Benazir Income Support Program. Advisor to the Prime Minister on Kashmir Affairs and Gilgit Baltistan has strongly condemned the state terrorism unleashed by Modi-led fascist government in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Amnesty International has accused Russia of committing war crimes in Ukraine. The Met Office has predicted severe heat wave in the country conditions from Sunday. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Mohammad Shahbaz Sharif visits District Shangla tomorrow. According to advisor to the Prime Minister, Engineer Amir Makam, he will address a big public gathering in Bisham area of District Shangla. The Prime Minister will announce a historic development package for the socio-economic development of the area. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has directed the Punjab government to enhance its target for wheat procurement and instructed the Food Security Division to timely import the commodity if need arises to meet any shortfall. He was chairing a high-level meeting in Islamabad today regarding wheat production, existing reserves and its consumption at the provincial and the national levels. The Prime Minister also issued directions for curbing smuggling of wheat, evolving a comprehensive strategy to check theft of the commodity and corruption. Interior Minister Rana Sanawala says the government has decided to launch a crackdown against elements maligning the people through immoral videos. In a statement today, he said those spreading unethical material on the social media will be arrested. Rana Sanawala said Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has directed not to tolerate such material. He said that social media will not be allowed to be used for mudslinging on others. He said that such incidents will be curbed wherein material is used for blackmailing. Interior Minister said that those involved in criminal activities will be dealt with iron hands. Federal Minister for Poverty Alleviation and Social Security, Shazia Atar Mari says the present government is determined to extend Benazir Income Support Program to 10 million families. This she stated while addressing a large number of people in Tando Adam today. Shazia Mari further said that under the BISP, 8 million families are currently receiving financial assistance. The chairperson of Benazir Income Support Program said that Pakistan People's Party would continue to serve the poor people by carrying out mission of Shaheed Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto and Benazir Bhutto. Minister for Human Rights Riaz Hussain Pirzada has said that the government will work towards further improving image of the country. Chairing a meeting in Islamabad, he said that no compromise will be made on national interests. He said the government will soon respond to the letter written by PTI leader Shiri Mazari to the United Nations. The senior most deputy governor of the State Bank of Pakistan, Dr. Murtaza Sayyid, assumed the office of acting governor of the State Bank of Pakistan today. He has more than 20 years of experience in macroeconomic research and policy making. Dr. Murtaza Sayyid also worked with International Monetary Fund for 16 years before joining the State Bank of Pakistan. It may be mentioned that term of former governor State Bank of Pakistan, Dr. Reza Bakr, ended last Wednesday. Pakistan's export to China crossed $1.039 billion mark in the first quarter from January to March of current year, registering a nearly 17% increase. According to data issued by General Administration of Customs of China, textiles, seafood and agricultural products have posted an increase among the growth of trade in major products between the two countries, which has augmented Pakistan's economic recovery and increased its exports to China. This is Radio Pakistan. Advisor to the Prime Minister on Kashmir Affairs and Gilgit Baltistan, Kamar Zaman Kaira has strongly condemned the state terrorism unleashed by Modi-led fascist government in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. In a statement today, he said the innocent Kashmiri youth are being martyred in the garb of search operations. He said that Kashmir dispute must be resolved according to UN resolutions. Indian troops in the fresh act of state terrorism today martyred three youth in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. 
the Indian troops martyred the youth during a cordon and search operation in Pahalgaon area of Islamabad district. The troops during similar operations arrested three youth in Baramola and Islamabad districts. Meanwhile, the old party's Hurriyat conference leaders in their statements paying glowing tributes to prominent freedom activist Riaz Neku and his associate Adil Ahmed on their second martyrdom anniversary said that the reign of oppression unleashed by India and illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir will end soon. They said the blood of the Kashmiri martyrs would not be allowed to go waste and their mission of achieving freedom from Indian joke would be accomplished at all costs. The Khyber Pakhtunkhwa government has decided to impose a ban on mining for minerals at tourist areas in Malakand Division. According to details, Commissioner Malakand Division has written a letter to the Mines and Minerals Department suggesting ban on mining at the tourist areas to preserve natural beauty of tourist spot Kumrat. He said mining at the tourist sites like Kumrat will not only decrease the attraction of these areas but also will cause cutting down of trees and other related environmental issues. Leaders of the G7 will hold video talks with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Sunday aimed to impose more sanctions on Russia. Talking to media in Berlin, a spokeswoman for the German government as acting G7 chair Christian Hoffmann said that it will cover current issues while Ukrainian President Zelensky take part and report on the current situation in his country. Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Britain and the United States comprise the group of seven club of rich nations. The US President Joe Biden has asked Congress to provide tens of thousands of Afghan refugees with a pathway to become legal permanent residents of the United States. More than 60,000 Afghans were evacuated to the US last summer when the Taliban took back control of the country. Russia was claimed that destroyed a large ammunition depot in the eastern Ukrainian city of Kramatorsk today. In a statement, Defense Ministry said that two Ukrainian warplanes were also shot down in the eastern Luhansk region. Amnesty International has accused Russia of committing war crimes in Ukraine. Talking to media in Kyiv, Amnesty's senior crisis response advisor Donatella Rovera said there is evidence that Russian troops committed war crimes, including extrajudicial execution of civilians when they occupied an area outside Ukraine's capital in February and March. The rights group said in a report published today that civilians have also suffered abuse such as reckless shootings and torture in the early stages of Russia's invasion. United Nations has called for ending cycle of death and destruction in Ukraine. In a statement, Secretary General Antonio Guterres said the United Nations will continue to scale up humanitarian operations to save lives and reduce suffering in Ukraine. The UN chief said a meaningful solution to global food insecurity requires reintegrating Ukraine's agricultural production and the food and fertilizer production of Russia and Belarus into world markets despite the war. Met Office has predicted severe heat wave conditions in the country from Sunday. According to Met Office, due to high pressure, day temperatures are likely to increase gradually from 6 to 9 degrees Celsius above normal in most parts of the country. Hot and dry weather is expected in most parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, rain with thunderstorm is expected at isolated places in Gil Gilgit, Baltistan and Kashmir. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analysis, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and also watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com slash radiopakistannewsofficial.